Hi everyone, it's Gilbert and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Um, I hope you're all well. I'm here today to present to you an interview I recently did with MD90. And in this um, interview, um, we basically discussed uh, my whole experience living in the UK for over 15 years, um, where I see myself long term, and yeah, just my whole journey while I've been here. And um, yeah, just talking about my experience. Um, what the future holds for me and um, yeah if you are um, new to this channel guys please do subscribe and if you are a returning subscriber welcome back and I do hope you enjoy this video guys so let's um, dive deep into this one guys hello world from whichever time zone you're catching me from my name is MD90 and welcome to my youtube channel if you're not subscribed to the channel make sure you hit that subscribe button turn on the bell notification to all so that you do not miss any upload that comes up well, today I'll be having a conversation with a Zambian that is based in the UK and find out uh, his experience living in the diaspora. Um, and also, you check out the comment section with the pinned comment uh, about joining um, membership on this channel to get ac uh, access to exclusive uh, content, the behind the scenes of um, movies that I'm working on and stuff. So yeah, I'm just standing by as I wait for my guest to show up and come through. Um, yeah. So my guest is here just a second before he joins. Mm -hmm. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You okay? I'm all right, bro. How are you doing? Not too bad, thank you. Not too bad. We're in a lockdown, but managing. I cannot imagine. We, we we only hear about the lockdown here. It's not it's not it's not that it's not, it's not that bad here. <laughs> it, over here, it's real. You know, you go outside just to go to work and back home. That's it. Yeah. Mm. So are you are you back at work or yes, you're working from home? Um, at the minute, we're work we've split our work teams into two teams. So one team is at home one week, and then the other is at work, and then we switch it every single week. All right, but, um, <laughs> Let's not just dive in. Let's introduce ourselves. Introduce yourself to my audience. They might not be aware of who you are. Yes, yeah, so um, my name is Gilbert Lungu. Um, originally from Lusaka, Zambia. Um, I moved to the United Kingdom in 2000 and early 2005 um, on a permanent uh, basis to join my parents, uh, be my mum. And I went to school here, college here. And I permanently live here and work here. And yeah. I usually visit Zambia, you know, every year, maybe once or twice throughout the year, um, just to check on family, um, just a few investments I've got there. And, um, yeah. Um, you moved in uh, 2005? In two, well, initially, um, 2004 was just, a, you know, a visit for one month, you know, just yeah. to, you know, put one foot in the water and see if I like it. Same with my brothers. And then, you know, we really enjoyed it. And then a year later, um, my mum got things rolling, you know, in terms of, you know, a permanent move. And then a year later, in 2005, we were able yeah. to move permanently. That's, oh, that's, oh, that's awesome. So you did both yeah. your high school and the university from that side, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, so I did my um, high school here and I went to college here. Yeah. What did you study? Um, so I did a diploma in sports at college. And then yeah. um, after college, you know, I came across a really good opportunity um, in, yeah. you know, in employment full time. So I dived straight into that. And um, yeah, that's where, you know, I got up to as far as education. Yeah, I went to college and uh, straight after college, I started working straight away. So which part of the UK are you in? Um, in Manchester. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Yeah, I've got a friend that is from Manchester. I don't know if you know uh, Charity. I recently uh, seen the video that you did with her. Yeah, I don't know her personally, yeah. but I've seen the video that you yeah. shot with her. And it's really good. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah. She's from Manchester. So, yeah, I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> and then, yeah, um, no. you, you, you also, uh, you said you're, you're investing back home. What prompted the, that, that, that idea to invest back in Africa? In as much as so, you're in the UK. Um, in 2008, I uh, went back for the festive period. And, you know, I've got a cousin of mine who lives in Cowan. She works in the police and, you know, she, she had took out a loan, um, you know, I think around 45,000 just to get started with buying, you know, a piece of land and building. And, you know, she was telling me... euros? 
No, she, she she got it for I think it was forty five thousand quarts. She took a, lo- a loan out for, and yeah. you know, she, I asked her, "Oh, what's that loan for?" Um, she said, "Oh, I recently bought a piece of land. You know, I know it's not enough to finish my house, but I want to get started. That's the most important part." So I was thinking, yeah. forty five thousand. That's what. That's literally yeah. been over a thousand here. I'm thinking, and I've not even got a property here. Like, what's got, you know? Like, I yeah. need to get into this. So, yeah. funny enough. Um, the residential area where she uh, bought her land from, there was a few still going, and it just happened to be that next door to her, you know, was available. So I purchased the plot next door to her immediately. And, uh, yeah, yeah. So I purchased it straight away, and you know, yeah. I've started building it. And that same property is due to be completed this year. And I just also take motivation. You know, for my dad, he's got multiple properties in Zambia, probably 14, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, you know, 14 yeah. rental properties. And, you know, that's where, you know, I just get my motivation from and just my inspiration from, you know, just seeing, you know, how he's been able to acquire all those properties and, you know, how those properties will help him, you know, when he's finished working. And, stuff. and that's where I get my motivation from. from that. Um, in, uh, do you have any plans of relocating to Africa or you'll be doing the annual visits that you always do? No, 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 no. The annual visits are just for the time being. You know, the annual visits are just from, you know, just the time being where I'm just, you know, creating my foundation back home. So, you know, just getting all these things in place. Uh, I do, I, well, I 100% will be relocating back home. But, you know, I want to do it in a safe way because I've seen so yeah. many people, uh, yeah. you know, they, they leave too soon and you have to come back because yeah. it's not worked out. You know, I yeah. don't want to go back to live in, in my parents' house or, or start yeah. looking for work, you know. I want to go back yeah. with all these things, you know, in place. And, yeah, yeah, there's a way I want to do it. And, I, you know, it's not, you know, some people, you know, overlook it. You know, it's actually quite a big thing, you know, relocating. And, you know, it needs to be done, you know, properly. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah. Because I've seen a number of people like, no, I'm moving up back to Africa without you laying down a plan. And then when you come here, you, you, you start suffering more than the people that you find on the ground. So I, I, like, I, I like that you're doing that. I always think to myself, you know, do some of these people not think that, you know, they are graduates back home who are, you know, are they not looking for work? Do people not think of that? Yeah. No, they, they think when they come, back, come here, they're the ones who are coming with the papers. Like, only to find that, no, there are PhD holders here. Um, you know, <laughs> Some even, you know, some were, you know, even at the greater, you know, education and some of them were, you know, moving back, yeah. you know, looking yeah. for work. So, you know, okay. I had a look at it. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I had a look at it and um, I thought to myself, you know, what's the safest way? Because my parents, you know, they're completely against it. My dad doesn't want to hear anything about it. My, <laughs> mom, my mom is open to hearing it, but I can tell she's like, mm, you know, really? Uh, so... You know, I thought to myself, what's the safest way to do it? Because yeah. I can't go over there now and start looking for work because that's just... No, that's no, 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 no. And obviously, if I did that, you know, the money that I'll be earning, you know, won't be enough to do, probably won't be enough to do what I want to do. So so I that I Sorry? I mean, uh, the money that you'll be earning won't be able to sustain the lifestyle that you're already living. So you better invest. Exactly. So I thought to myself, you know, what are the safest ways? What is the ultimate safest way to move back home? You know, yeah. given that I've already lived, you know, 20 odd years here. So I thought to myself, yeah. well, you know, I'm not going to, it's not going to be something that I'm going to do tomorrow, you know, but, yeah. you know, when I, when I do get to my mom's stage where she's around 55 and, you know, she's retired, yeah. you, know, yeah. there's, uh, you know, there's something that we call, you know, uh, you know, do, do, yeah, you, have, you have pensions in Zambia, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, so like here, you know, um, there's like a state pension and stuff. So when you get to a certain age, when you're eligible for that, you know, mm-hmm. the government you know, pays you a certain amount every single yeah. week to live in. And mm-hmm. I, I, had a, I logged into my portal online because you can see, you know, you know, what, you know, on your current, in your current earnings, what they're going to pay you weekly then. You can yeah. see that and get an idea. So I thought to myself, well, if I, if I can just get to that mm-hmm. and, you know, I'm already a dual citizenship holder, so... I can still That's receive okay. the money that they paid me here, but I'm yeah. utilizing it at home. You know, I've already been in a position where I've already got all my properties secure. You know, That's I've got true. guaranteed money coming in every single week. My brothers, they don't want to move back to Zambia. I can always come they back here and visit. Then that is like the ultimate safest way. You can't go wrong. You know, you have a guaranteed income every yes. week yes. in addition to whatever you've personally invested. That's smart. You know, I've seen people who want to do business and, you know, 
they're fun for, you know, three, six months and, you know, business that's doing bad and they have to come back because, you know, they've not invested well and, you know, they've not really yeah. got, you know, foundations back home, you know, to yeah. stay there. So I thought that is the ultimate safest way, you know, it actually ensures that, you know, I do all my work here and when I finish working, yeah. you know, I'm not going to stick around till I'm 65 to retire. I can retire early because I know where I'm going you know, the amount that I'll be getting is sufficient and is more than enough to live comfortably back home without ever worrying about having to move back here. Coming back here, I've got my papers for here. I'll come and visit my families, my brother, my mum and whatever. I'll visit them and I'll go back yeah. home. But that is the plan ultimately long term. So that's why I'm, you know, doing all these works now, you know, in advance and, you know, building towards that, you know, goal. So uh, aside from uh, the Zambians, there's aside, any other African uh, in diaspora that are living there, is, is, is this a common conversation among you guys about investing back home or it was just uh, something that was prompted based on your cousin investing here? Um, what prompted me, because initially when I came to the UK in 2005, we, yeah. you know, we went a period of 14 years without a visit back home. Yeah. So... I've been coming back home, you know, that's where, I, you know, just my eyes were opened up to all the possibilities back home. I just, you know, I couldn't speak Nyanja. I had to learn how to speak Nyanja as I, you know, as I went. So I yeah. had to relearn. And, you know, I just had that reconnection, you know, you know, with Zambia and my family. And I just thought to myself, you know, I just love this place. I found myself going back every single year ever since. I think yeah. since 2000, I think since 2016 when we went back, I've probably revisited about six to seven times and my whole brothers, they've only been back the once. And it, to me, it just that, you know what, I want to live in Zambia permanently long term. So that's why just all my energy, just all my energy just shifted towards this ultimate goal of building in Zambia and safely moving back to Zambia without any worries. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I wanted to find out um, what, what's been your experience living in the UK because uh, we hear traits of uh, racism. Is it as bad as uh, the US or not? I think the U the US is on a whole other level in terms of like just you know police brutality and yeah. you know in terms of definitely police brutality. I think the US is far worse because obviously here police you know don't move with guns or anything like that. So. Yeah. You know, I'd say it's safer here in that sense. And as far as racism, it it is there and, you know, it does exist. There's no, you know, can't cover that. It does exist. And yeah. there have been, you know, instances like, especially back in high school where, you know, you know, you're young and people don't know, you know, what they're saying and how it affects other people, etc. You know, where you have been on the receiving end of it. But it's never, it's never bothered me, to be honest with you. You know, I've just always been quite, you know, thick skinned and, you know, in that sense. It's yeah. never really got to me. It's like, you know, it is there and you know, I've received it, but, you know, I've just always been, you know, mature enough just to, you know, just not to react, you know. You know more time yeah. when people, you know, racially abuse, you know, it's just a reaction. You know, I've just always, you know, my mom just always taught me, you know, just not to give, you know, reaction towards certain things. You know, yeah. just, you know, I know, just completely ignore it and focus on what you're here for. You know, that's always yeah. been drilled into me, you know, just to remember you know, what I'm currently here for and where I want to go. And, you know, so I, I'm quite good in terms of just ignoring certain things, you know. That's awesome. And then uh, you also started telling uh, your own narrative on the YouTube channel. What, what's your primary focus on your YouTube channel? So uh, my YouTube channel, that's an interesting one because when I was coming in tw from 2015 to 2017, when I go to Zambia, you know, I usually like, you know, travel, you go to Livingston, you do different activities. Yeah. You know, you yeah. go to San Francisco's places. And I've always had all this footage, you know, on my phone, you know, just recording yeah. it for my own personal, you know, viewing. Yeah. And I just, you know, I was speaking to, you know, the Kumba guy? Yeah, yeah, I do know him. Yeah, I was speaking to him and, you know, I was telling him, oh, I've been to such a, I've been to such a place and whatnot. You know, I've managed to record all this. And in Livingston, I think it was a package which I paid for about 200 USD where you do different activities and they record it for you, you know, they yeah, edit yeah. it and record it for you. And, you know, he was, he was telling me, he was saying, you know, you've got all this great content, you know, you've got a YouTube channel, but you want to use it for viewing. You know, yeah. why don't you start, you know, learning to, you know, edit your videos and upload them, you know, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to give this a try because it was in lockdown at the time. It wasn't mm -hmm. working. I wasn't allowed to go to work. I was at home every day for six yeah. months. I thought, you know what, I'm going to pass it. Let me just 
try to edit and you know just see where this thing goes and yeah. i've actually you know, it's actually addictive you know once you start you can't stop with it and i started getting oh, yeah. involved with yeah. it is it is very interesting to uh, if you yeah. watch you definitely you you I'm always up to date, you know, with I live for anything from Zambia as far as content yeah. and politics and just anything happening in Zambia. So I thought, you know, I'm watching all these things, you know, let, let me just, you know, get involved with, you know, you know, uploading certain things and my own videos and, you know, yeah. yeah. So it's, you know, slowly, slowly growing and on YouTube is a lot of work, by the way. Yeah, it is. It was a lot of work. <laughs> I mean, uh, you, you mentioned something with regard to the, the political scene on, uh, in the motherland here in Zambia. What, what, what are your views with what's uh, Kaiji preparing? Um it's interesting because obviously on on one hand you know you've got the PF and you've got UPND those are your main two parties right yeah yeah and at the minute you know i would say the momentum is with UPND in terms of support you see on social media and crowd gatherings that you see on certain rallies and stuff and yeah. you've got the people trying to block UPND to a certain extent you know to do you know to do certain things like you recently saw you know how can this limo wasn't allowed to fly out recently you know yeah, yeah. i you know i'm sure you know why that is and recently there was obviously the you know the killings of those two um those two people that were killed i believe yeah. when um when um it was you know called to go to headquarters but overall so, uh, you you've seen the activism among us the, the young people they are more active uh, they're, they're no longer passive in terms of politics that's a good thing i think what do you think about that i think that's a really good move because usually um in zambia especially a long time ago you know that wasn't heard of where people would go you know to march you know they'd go to protests and stuff you've seen that you know i would say more so in recent years over the last 3 4 years you know that's you know been coming a thing now you know people are able to go and do that i think that's a good thing that you know the police do allow that you know providing that is done you know safe in a safe manner to try to accommodate for that you never yeah. usually see that in them that wasn't a thing that's awesome no i i'm glad you took the time to have a conversation with me and then enlighten us about your experience in the uk and back home in zambia i'm going to tag your youtube channel in the comment section as we end this conversation do you have anything else to you, you have to cover before we we, we sign off No well obviously speaking to um MD90 um you know I would probably say the biggest channel in Zambia personally uh, <laughs> look at you in, <laughs> in, you know in, in terms of keeping you up to date you know I enjoy following your channel you know you've got that one channel where you know just following your channel alone you know is enough for me to know what's going on back home and stuff in the, in the motion, I'm, I'm delighted to do, to be part of that journey all right bro thanks for the time you yeah. we'll catch up later. No, I'll, thank you for having me man and you know we'll catch up soon. All right, awesome. All right, you have a good day man, yeah.